Tomahawk and Western Railroad, built into and over the Rockies of Colorado, where they said it was impossible to lay a track and run a train. But the experts were wrong. For here's the first train to go out over the high iron, pulled by engine number one, the Emma Sweeney, a narrow gauge 10 wheeler of some 33 odd tons. Engine number one was built in Philadelphia by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. She is the latest design, sleek and modern and is equipped with a newly invented air brake. Her kerosene headlight, which is the personal property of her engineer, can throw a gleam 25 feet ahead of her. very fast and can attain speeds in excess of 35 miles per hour. Yes, it would be safe to say that on this September day, 1876, she is the last word. In 1843, it was then I met sweet Betty McGee, an elegant girl, she seemed to be one working on the rail. An elegant girl, she seemed to be one working on the rail. In 1847, sweet Billy McGee, she went to heaven. She had one child, she had eleven while working on the railroad. Had one child, she had eleven while working on the railroad. Say, does this bother you? That don't bother me. Well, what makes you so nervous? I don't want to spoil your ride, Mr. Jameson. What do you mean? Well, considering all the people that want something awful to happen this railroad, in my opinion, we're going too fast. What are you talking about? The railroad helps everybody. Who'd want something awful to happen to it? Stage company's going out of business on account of it. There was another narrow gauge railroad just like this one, the Silverton Short Line. They were going to put a stagecoach company out of business too. The first train out over the right of way, everything was great. Until it got to the bridge over Devil's Canyon. So? There wasn't any. <laughs> well, if anything was going to happen to this railroad, it would have happened before this, wouldn't it? How? The train had never been run before. You mean that this is the first trip? I do. You mean I'm the first passenger? You are the first and only passenger. We are going too fast. <laughs> Like ducks, Dakota. Don't be a fool. Dawson said it was supposed to look accident like. Glory be, I hope we didn't put a flat on the drivers. Everything all right, Mr. Sweeney? All I got to say is this is mighty quick country. Not this quick, though. Who is this? What's the passenger? Mr. Jameson, that's Terrace Sweeney, the engineer. Sweeney, pleased to meet you. Meet Sad Eyes Tatum, smoke agent, uh, fire boy, that is. Uh, you were saying... Uh, I was saying, Mr. Sweeney, that somebody doesn't like your tea kettle. Don't call Miss Sweeney a tea kettle. She's the prettiest ten-wheeler this side of the Rockies. Well, she last she is. Meaning what? Meaning that one rock don't make a landslide. A lot of smaller stuff would have come down with it. Now, now, Mr. Jameson, nothing of the kind. You get aboard and relax. And I'll walk on to Epitaph and get some men to push this pebble off the rails. That's all right, but I always thought proper etiquette was for a captain to stay with his ship and a conductor to stay with his train. So it is, so it is. But I don't think we're going to need any help. I think Miss Sweeney can push it off by herself. Well, just in case she can, I'll go on ahead. I'll have the sheriff send some help. The walk will do me good.
I'll meet you boys at the Overland office. Uh, Trankus, tell the Colonel what happened here. Yeah, right, Dakota. Hey! Hey! Hey, you fellas! Grab ass. Get him up. No offense, fellas. No offense. <laughs> Speak your piece, dude. Well, I was on my way to Epitaph, and this train had a laxident. Thought you fellas might give me a hitch. Drummer, eh? Yes, indeedy. Best in the West. <laughs> All right, dude, climb up and shut up. Thanks very much. But you know, you shouldn't throw down a scattergun on a fellow like that. Might get yourself punctuated. Not when I got the drop. But you don't got the drop. Not that I hold with guns. <laughs> fellow has to carry one, but I don't hold with them. <laughs> Would you mind holding this to me, please? Thank you, and you too. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just jump right up here if you give me a stirrup. Uh, okay. Thank you. Who's that? Colonel Dawson, he owns a stagecoach line. Oh. Shut up! Well, what's the prize, fellas? Howdy! How do you do, friend? My name is Johnny Jameson, but my friends call me Jim. Do for you, gentlemen? You can raise your mitts or I'll cut you off pocket high. You Kit Dodge. Kit Dodge? Who, me? No, I'm Tuckerty Jones. Where is he? Well, Mr. Dodge's in his office there. He's busy. He's tied up now. Fellas, if I was you, I wouldn't let Mr. Dodge catch you hanging around here. Because he can put a bullet through your buttonhole and cool you and never even touch your shirt. We'll wait. Grandpa, don't you pull away from me. Stop doing that. I'm going to tie this tie no matter what. Grandpa, will you sit still? Oh, it's too tight. Oh, it is not. I say it's too tight. Oh. Come on, Kit, for heaven's sake, let her tie your tie. Oh. Last message we got said the train had passed 10 Mile Tower. She'll be here any minute. Here she comes now. I'm going to get you ready if it's the last thing I do. Get up here now. Now, let me get around No, here. sir, by glory. Neither you nor my own granddaughter gonna hobtie me into store-bought and closed. Marshal, listen to me. There's a lot at stake in this little railroad. I'm not talking about any personal advantages to me. I'm talking about this country and what'll happen to Colorado when this railroad goes through. It's the opening of the West, Kit. It means getting the wealth of a nation out of the far mountains. There are plenty of folks don't want this railroad. Dawson and his Overland gang. But these people are only thinking of themselves, not their country. This job has got to be done, and it's got to be done right. Well, since you put it that way, Mr. Bishop, let's get it done. Hold it to you, Miss Kit. Oh, not me, Mr. Brink. He was Grandpa's meat. What'll we do with this one, Miss Kit? Oh, uh, put him in jail and uh, we'll give him a fair trial this afternoon and hang him first thing tomorrow morning. Well, Chuckity? Call him Johnny Behind the Deuce. What's he doing around at the tell? Told me he was selling subscriptions for the Saturday Evening Post. That's the truth. Magazines and mustache cups. Colorado and Utah. Here's my samples. Was he healed? Search him, couldn't find him. Hey, our friend, nice and soft on the mustache cups. You could use one, too. <laughs> or the Saturday Evening Post. Don't often see that in a town like this, do you? <laughs> What's this? Oh, yeah, that's not for sale. No. You ever been to a necktie party? No. Well, you're going to one tomorrow. And it's going to be yours. Now, wait a minute. You can't do this to me. I'm innocent. You was in with those other coyotes. How do you think I got this egg on my head? Do you think a chicken laid it? Ask him, he saw it. That's right, Miss Kidd. Oh, Chuckity, how could you fall for an old trick like that? 
Why'd you come in here if it wasn't to turn Grandpa's lights out? To tell Mr. Dodge that engine number one of the Tomahawk on Western is stuck five miles out of town with a boulder on its rails. That's why I came into town. That makes you just about the biggest liar in the state of Colorado. Well, he was stuck. Uh, Sweeney must have pushed it off. <laughs> Look, lady, I'm no killer. All you gotta do is check with them when they get here. They'll tell you I was a passenger. Now, that'd sound reasonable. If I was feeling reasonable, and I'm not, I'm gonna give you a chance to get out of town. But if you're inside the city limits by sundown, you're gonna become a permanent resident. Just who do you think you are? Look, lady, this is a free country. I'm a citizen. I got a right to come and go as I please. And I just got here. Mister, you just left. Gosh almighty, son, that's almost a haircut. Next time it might be almost a shave. can't do this to me. Oh, yes, she can. That gal ain't no ordinary gal. There's six lonesome graves in Boot Hill on account of her. Mr. Bishop, Mr. Bishop, she's here. You engines, come and we can see the smoke down well, get back there, son. I'll be right over. Well, doctor. Fair to Midland. Fair to Midland? Get out of here, Doc. Yes, sir, Mr. Dodge. I wouldn't trust you with a dead mule. Yes, sir. Get it! Spare the middle and... For heaven's sake, Kit, what are we going to do? You're in no condition to travel. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Kit, honey, come here. Chuck, it, you get a badge out of the drawer there? Raise your right hand. Do you swear solemn to uphold the laws of the United States and the state of Colorado? So help me, Grandpa. Give me the badge. In the presence of these witnesses, I hereby deputize you, United States Marshal, La Plata County, State of Colorado. Oh, Grandpa, you don't mean it! This is absolutely impossible. Why? She can outride, outshoot, and outspit any road agent this side of Pikes Peak, and she's taken over. You leave everything to me, Grandpa. I'll rest a day, and then shortcut across the mountains to Tomahawk and a good horse. I'll get there for you, Will. Yes, sir, Grandpa. Uh, hold on, granddaughter. I gotta talk with you about something. Personal, that is. I'll wait for you outside, Miss Kit. Uh, Kit, this is the first time you hit the trail alone, you know? I mean, uh, I won't be there to keep any eye on you. You know what I mean? Uh-uh. Yeah. Well, um, uh, sit down here a minute. It's like the bees and the flowers, Kit. The flowers get all full of honey, and then the bees start flocking to them like... When a girl gets to be your age, it means... Well, uh, it means she ain't quite the same here and there like she was before she reached your age, you know? Don't follow, Grandpa. You don't? No. Hmm. Mm. Girls are girls, see? Mm -hmm. And boys are boys, see? And it's nature's law that, that... Well, that's how it goes. What I'm trying to say is, I'm trusting you, honey. Oh, why, you can trust me, Grandpa. I'll get that engine through in one piece. No, it's not the engine I'm worried about getting through in one piece. I don't get you, Grandpa. You'd better get going, honey, and be a good girl. Sure, Grandpa. And you take care of yourself. So long. The pony. Did you get the message? Well, thank the Lord. If any sidewinder starts sweet-talking that gal, 
you got my blessing to part his hair with your axe. Hello, Dakota. Hello, Clayton. Hello, Hi. Hi. Hi, Dakota. Colonel, I'm sorry about that. Congratulations, rock. Dakota, on the way you've handled things. Uh, take it easy, Colonel. It wasn't our fault that rock didn't work. I told Trankus to Trankus try it. Trankus is dead. And Gila will stretch her rope tomorrow morning. What? Now listen to me and get this straight once and for all. This is the way we're going to operate. Dakota, you join up with the posse that's taken the engine to Tomahawk. They'll need a top hand now. That old man Dodge can't go along. Bat, you and Charlie and Fargo follow their trail. Drift into their camp. The coat I'll cover for you. And then what? When everybody's hit the sack, you plant dynamite under that engine and light it. Sure, Colonel. Black Wolf, go into the hills. Find the Arapahoes. Stir them up. Tell them what the iron horse will do. How it'll scare their buffalo away. If Indians make war, maybe they kill us too. That's a chance we'll have to take. My name is William Bishop. Glad to see you, Mr. Bishop. I guess you're glad to see me, too. I guess you thought we'd never make it, huh? Well, you haven't made it yet. Let's go on the station. Take care of Miss Sweeney, Sad Eyes. All right, now, stand back. No touching. Mr. Bishop. Sent the news up to Tomahawk, but ain't sure it got through. I think them Redskins cut the line. Never rains, but it pours. What's all the wailing for? How far is this Tomahawk? 60 miles, and you got to get there for Saturday noon. 60 miles? Why, Miss Sweeney can knock off a run like that in a couple of hours. You'll find it'll take a little longer. Mountains? They don't bother my girl none. No tracks. She's built to take the Rockies themselves. She got plenty of weight on her drivers, and when she take... No track. Between here and Dead Horse Point, that is. The rails they shipped us from England got lost in the storm in the Straits of Magellan. We never did finish the right of way. But at Dead Horse Point, the track begins again. How far is Dead Horse Point? Forty miles. Forty miles? But, Mr. Bishop, I got 33 tons of locomotive outside. How am I going to get to Tomahawk without track? Here, ma'am. I reckon. I was on my way up to Tommy Hawk and figured maybe you could use an extra gun on the trail. And who are you? They call me Dakota, Mr. Roven Wrangler. You notch that plow handle every time you rope a calf? The fellas bound to pick up a few notches in the course of living. Oh, die. You know how to use that thing? Yes, ma'am. Wild Bill Hickok taught me. They don't come no better. Then him or you? Me. Pony, go find a tin can for Dead-Eyed Dickie. You shoot from over there. Boys! You'll be healthier with your heads down. When he tosses it, you draw on fire. You ready? Have been. That's pretty good shooting, mister. Why'd you say you were heading for Tomahawk? 
Tell the truth, ma'am. I uh, hear they need a new sheriff up there. Oh, peace officer. Well, we need every hand we can get, Dakota. You know how to skin a mule? I'm stubborn myself. Well, see those skinners get them hitched up right to that engine. Yes, ma'am. And uh, if there's anything else I can do for you, you just wiggle your little pinky. He's kind of pretty. Oh, boy. Oh, you say that about all the boys. Kit. Kit. Yes, Mr. Bishop. Trouble. Lots of it. Well, what's the hitch? Well, Mr. Larimore has just discovered something terrible. Hmm? And this charter will have been fulfilled if said company shall be operating a train between Epitaph and Tomahawk by noon of September 5th, 1876, with at least one paying passenger given safe transportation between said cities. We've got to have a passenger. Uh, Kit, for heaven's sake. Go and see if you can't find some greenhorn who'll be willing Nobody's to... Nobody's very keen for the Tomahawk Trail right now, Mr. Bishop. But if we don't get a passenger, we forfeit everything. Well, I can't promise. I'll try. Funny. The Overland will have road agents all the way. Nothing doing. And I don't want no Arapaho haircut. Not on your life. We'll draw straws. Not me, brother. May I have a ticket, please? You want... A ticket? That's right, old timer. On the first train out of town. I give him a ticket, Homer. Mister, we only got one train. Well, that's fine. And it's going no place but Tomahawk. That's still fine. What time does she leave? Just as soon as you buy your ticket. That'll be two dollars hard money, Mister. You sure you want to go? I couldn't be surer. Bear me witness, dude. It ain't on my head. What ain't on your head? Your blood. Blood? This train's off the track. Who told you? Well, tell me why. Mr. Bishop, what are we going to do? We're all hitched and ready, and I can't find anybody. You. I told you to get out of this town by sundown. Now, wait a second, Kit. You can't talk to him like that. You can't? He's our passenger. He bought the ticket to Tomahawk. Him? Well, I'll be doggone if I'll ride her down a toad that helped put a blue whistler into my grandpa. For the last time, I had nothing to do with your grandfather getting winged. I am an agent for the Saturday Evening Post. Now, hold on, Kit. Personal feelings have nothing to do with it. It's your job to take the train to Tomahawk and give its passenger safe conduct. You mean I got to take care of this fella? As if he were your own husband. All right. But the minute we get to Tomahawk, I'm going to become a widow. Departing on track one. Only got one track. That's what I said. Departing on track one. The Tomahawk Trailblazer. Oh, boy! Hey, Mr. Sweeney, it's me. I'm going with you. Then you're out of your head. What's eating on him? You better get aboard. Gentlemen, we have a little problem. No cars? No cars. All right, man, I hold that lead team right there. That's it. Now, the next three team back up here. Give them some slack on this chain. That's it. Back them up. Come on, don't be all day. Come on. Back him up. Oh, Minnie Pearl. Whoa! I hit you with a head. No track? No track. Yeah. Well, I think I... Hey, think, oh, this is your ticket? Uh, there's been a slight misunderstanding. I thought no, I was going to ride... Right. All right. Get him, boys. <laughs> Hey, killer! The laundry's here. What's the trouble? I'm going to call you gun, my lady, my sinai. I'm going to call you a little bit of a gun. I'm going to call you a little bit of a gun. I'm going to call you a Tommy Hawk. He's going to call you a little bit of a gun. I don't get your palaver. He says he wants to come along. He's got the laundry. The laundry? Yeah, the laundry for Tommy Hawk, and he's been waiting two months to get there. Well, tell him we're full up. He can have my place. You heard me. Look, this fellow wants to be a passenger. I don't want to be. You bought the ticket. Well, I'll sell it to him. After all, you're going to need him up there. You're going to clean up the town. Tell this fella no. Kerbacher, Hofenheiner, Gunmaile. 
Oh, thank you, Missy. Thank you very much. You wouldn't take no for an answer. The art trade isn't going to be any place for ladies, man. Nobody mentioned ladies, and the show must go on. You mean actresses? My dear, how sweet of you. Won't be any picnic. We'll have to pitch in and help. Pitching will be no problem, dear. All right, ma'am. Fall in and keep your interval. Food is delicious, but the service leaves just a little to be desired. Your shoulder, please. <laughs> Haven't used them in a little while. If you promise not to run away, I'll give you the freedom of the camp. I'll promise you nothing. If he tries to jump camp, let him have it. Now, wait a minute. You're supposed to be taking care of me. He'll take care of you. How do you like it? How do you like that? Where did she get her nerve? I couldn't say. Easy does it, strangers. Well, speak your piece. We're riding in line for the Durango Telegraph. Your Arapaho's been cutting wire. We'd sure feel a heap safer bunking in your camp for the night. Just the three of you. Make yourself to home. Thank you, ma'am. Gilly, fix these gents up with some biscuits and beans. Hey, madam, how's about putting on the show for the crowd? Come on, give us the show. I missed the doggone thing in Epitaph. In this joint? Well, sure, Come we on, could on, 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 on. I ain't seen a lady's ankle in three years. <laughs> I ain't seen a lady in three years. <laughs> None of your lip fatty, and we ain't opening here tonight. You put it on in worse places than this? Indeed. Young man, we have played the finest houses in Denver, Dodge City, Deadwood, and Durango. How about that one night stand in Lost Mule Flats? You were there? <laughs> Very well, friends. We shall put on the show. <laughs> Only on one condition. There'll be no flirting with my girl. <laughs> Velvet fingers, the curtain. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is on. Oh, Joe. Oh, Jose. Oh, wait. Now, some men, when courting, are awfully shy. And when you speak to them, when scarcely reply. While some are so forward, you cannot deny. They frighten a lady away. And that's just 
the way with this fella named Joe. Whenever I need him, I'll have you to know. He always insists on stealing a kiss. Then I unto him have to say, Hey, oh, Joe, you let me go. Let me alone or I'll tell Papa. Oh, Joe, you let me go. Oh, what a former young man. me now, I bet he'd wail a living tar out of me. Why? Well, I've never seen a real show before. Isn't it wonderful? It's all right for a one-night stand. Oh, I suppose you could do better. Don't go away. Here before you, a babe in the wood, a gent who is constantly misunderstood. I well, I'll be doggone. Though maybe a little bit faster, for kisses were meant to be taken today, while girlies are blooming and tender and gay. But just because I like to show them the way, I'm leading them straight to disaster, they say. And it's hard oh, job, you let me go. Let me alone or I'll tell Mama. Oh, Joe, you let me go. Oh, what a forward young man. Johnny. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Say, uh, I take it back. You were good. Well, thanks to you, too. Those, uh, those girls sure are pretty, aren't they? They sure are. Grandpa says I'm homely as a mud fence. He's crazy, and I bet it all. You mean? I'm as pretty as they are. You're prettier than they are. You dry gulching me. Didn't a fellow ever tell you you were pretty? Jim Bailey was going to once. Why didn't he? Grandpa shot him. Why? Oh, he says that's Jezebel talking. If a, if a gal listens to it, she'll fall into the pit. Why haven't you ever known the other fellas? Only my grandpa. Oh, no, I mean fellas that were stuck on you. You know, gentle and kind. My grandpa's just about the kindest man you'll ever meet. Well, I recall the time they hanged Buckskin Tony. And they didn't fix the noose quite right, and when the trap sprung, there was poor old Buckskin jumping like a frog at the end of that rope with his tongue sticking out like a black snake. And you know what? Poor Grandpa just couldn't stand it. He got out his six-gun and blew Buckskin's head off so he wouldn't choke to death. Well, I got to check the camp. There's no hurry. Lay low. And the camp's better down, light a fuse, and let her blow. Good night, Dakota. Good night, Miss Kit. Pardon me. Want something? What in blazes?
Jesus are you doing to yourself, ma'am? Just trying to keep body and soul together. Meaning what? You wouldn't let a good gun get rusty, would you? Well, no, but I'm not talking about... girl's got to build on what she's got. Because sometimes she hasn't got what it takes. Savvy? Well, I don't do all that to myself. How do I look? Like a well-kept grave. Wait a minute. Take your hair, for instance. What do you do for it? I brush it once a week. <laughs> well, to keep the moths out of it. But look, girl, if you just frizz it a little, like this, see? You get real curl. You're really a very pretty girl, you know. That's what Johnny said. A pair of pretty eyes will knock them dead at 50 feet, presuming your aim is good. Aim? Sure. Pass a man. He stares at you. So you aim. Give him both barrels. Flutter your glimmers like this. Bang. He's a dead pigeon. But don't shoot till they see the whites of your eyes. Remember. I thought you'd hit the sack. I can't. Stars are too bright. It is a pretty night. Them stars are trying to twinkle like your eyes, Miss Kit. My grandpa once buried a man for saying a thing like that to me. Might be worth it. <clears throat> Good night. Thanks, Chuckity. Can you play that thing? Like a Spaniard. <laughs> Good night, Johnny. Good night, Mr. Sweeney. What's the matter? You got something in your eye? Think you want to sleep with the girls? No. Well, I'm a light sleeper. So am I. What I mean is if that pistol goes off, it's sure going to spoil my dreams. If you go off, it's sure going to spoil you. You know, you don't look like a killer. How come you to take it up? Miss Kit, why can't you believe me? I'm not a killer. I'm a drummer. Where'd you learn to speak Chinese? San Francisco's Chinatown. Do you speak any other foreign tongues? Speak them all. Learn them in my travels. Now you take German. You been to Germany? Oh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's a city where they make beer. A lot of Germans live there. I was on a trip I made to Minnesota to see the Mississippi River. What are you barking about? The Mississippi River isn't in Minnesota. I beg your pardon. The Mississippi River starts in Minnesota. It's just one foot across. Just imagine I stepped over it. Two years later, when I was down in New Orleans, it took me 20 minutes and a river packet to cross it. What'd you drum in New Orleans? Cards. Yeah, that's New Orleans. Southern Louisiana and East Texas. Cards? Just cards? Just cards? No. <laughs> take a look at these cards. Go ahead, take one. Feel the paper. It's the best quality there is. No marked decks, no cold decks. All high-class stuff. Incidentally, that's the deuce of spades you got there. That's right. <laughs> hey, that's quite a trick. Well, they don't call me Johnny behind the deuce for nothing. <laughs> How about the other one? <laughs> Go ahead, take another one. Right. You take one, too. Deuce of spades? Right. Deuce of spades? <laughs> <laughs> deuces. All deuces. <laughs> Is that all you do, just go around selling things? What's wrong with that? Well, where's it getting you? Gets me every place. I'm just the kind of a fellow who's got to see what's on the other side of that next hill. Grandpa says that some folks can't see the gold at their feet for the pyrites in the mountains. Yeah, well, your grandfather ought to impress that on you. The gold at your feet might be a couple of kids and a loving spouse instead of the tin star you got on your chest. Say, what's so good about you? You're nothing but a loose foot, no roots. Where's your spouse? It's different with me. I married the whole world. I get to go, that's all. Where have you been? 
Grandpa took me to Durango when I was eight. Durango? Well, that's just a hole in the rocks. I've stood on South Street in New York City, watched the great clipper ships stick their bowsprits right across the curb, and you had to move them back, let the horse cars by. I've crossed the Black Hills of Dakota. I've seen the wondrous spouts of Yellowstone. I've ridden the Chisholm Trail in Texas. And I watched the wedding of the rails at Promontory Point. I visited the Alamo where Texas was born. I saw him bury Mr. Lincoln in Springfield, Illinois. Yes, ma'am. From the rocks of Maine to the stake plains of the Panhandle, I've been. I'm just a born traveling man. I want to travel around, always sort of somewhere bound, with the sun hanging on my tail. Just let me follow my shadow singing, yippee i on the Colorado Trail. I want to plunk my guitar at the Silver Dollar Bar and flirt with a pink-haired frail. And then I'll follow my shadow singing, Yippee-i-addle on the Colorado Trail. On the Colorado Trail. Just in case something goes wrong, you and Charlie better ride out of here now. Fargo, it's your deal. Five aces. Yes, sir. Hand over that peacemaker, butt first and start talk. Hand it over. I got a mind to give you the same. He was handing over peaceful as a lizard, and you bumped him in cold blood. The man was fixing to drill you. He was going to pull a road agent spin on you. Road agent spin? That's right, ma'am. He was handing over butt first. <laughs> Look. Hey, I've never seen that one before. I thought every peace officer knew that one. It's a cinch every road agent does. I don't see what all the fuss is about. He tried to shoot you and I killed him, that's all. Too bad you couldn't have shot him in the arm or something so he could talk. You insinuating I shot him to keep him from talking? Dakota, I am not the man to tangle with. Why not? Because I am a passenger on this engine. And if I don't get the Tomahawk safely, there won't be any railroad. So don't go picking on me or you might get yourself hurt. That's all. We're not going to have any personal grudges in this camp. We've got a long way to go. So break it up and keep it that way. You're right, ma'am. Ah, sorry I lost my temper. I'll just bet you are. You shut up. Chuck it to you and the boys bury this fellow and get some shut-eye. we got hard country tomorrow. Yes, Miss Kidd. <clears throat> Excuses. Morning, Mr. Sweeney. Morning, Johnny. Hey, Mr. 
Chris Kent, where are we? We're getting near Massacre Creek. After we cross the trestle, Dead Horse Point's only five miles past. Ha ha! Hear that, Emmy girl? Five more miles and you can get your head of steam on again. And we better make it fast, too, ma'am. If you want this engine and tomahawk by noon Saturday. Pony and I got a scout up yonder. Can I go with you? You got an empty horse there. No. Now, wait a minute. I'm the passenger, right? You're supposed to take care of me, right? Well, then I demand to be taken in your custody. Oh, all right, then. You got a ride? I'll try and hang on. You ride front back on the engine. Keep your eyes open this engine country. I'll take care of that piece of pig iron just like it was you, Miss Kit. Thank you, Dakota. I'll be back. Thanks, Dakota. I'll be back. You shut your face. It's a good thing that Dakota ain't quick triggered by sweet talker. You'd be cooling by now. Oh, no such thing. You ought to be ashamed of yourself falling for that cowpoke. I'm not falling for nothing. Come on, you can't see the notches in his gun for the notch in his chin. I told you, shut up. Yes, ma'am. And that goes for you, too. in good shape. We get out here, we'll roll them plenty of time. You wouldn't roll her far. They end on the other side. Dawson's had to get the engine. Look at that. Isn't that something? Yeah. It's quite a gully. Makes a man feel about three feet away from heaven. Too close for me. Let's get off this trestle. What's the matter? Listen. I don't hear anything. That's what's the matter. Not a bird, nothing. What do you think, Pawnee? Did you hear what he said? Arapahoes around here. Could be. I'll wait for the engine on the brim. Say, hey, I didn't know you could read engine signs. Where'd you learn? One season when I was with Wahoo Jim's Wild West show. Peanuts, popcorn, and saddle sauce salve. Utah and Wyoming. Did you ever see a circus? No, no, I haven't. Engine named Crooked Knife taught me the signs. He was a trick rider. Did a good knife throwing act, too. Had to quit show business when his old man died. He's chief of all the Arapahoes now. Crooked Knife. <laughs> you know Crooked Knife? No, and we were pals. What? He's a dirty heathen that's been making war and causing all the trouble. He is not a heathen. He's a very high type, clean cut Aborigine. And you certainly can't blame him for making war. You'd be doing the same thing if you were an Arapaho. Mr. Dakota would catch up. I'd like to be out of here. Pretty scenery, though. I could take his girl out here away from everything and do a little busing. A little what? Busing. Haven't you ever been bust? Well, I guess you haven't. Should I have? Girl hasn't lived till she's been properly bust, believe me. I guess I just don't exactly understand what busing is. You know, it's kissing. Oh. You know what kissing is? I've heard tell. You mean you've never been kissed? You bet I haven't. Well, now, how do you expect to meet up with your valentine, get hitched and settle down to raising a family if you've never even been kissed? Grandpa says I'll get hitched when the right time comes. Well, you keep on this way and the right time will find you a gun-toting old maid. Have you ever been bust? Mm, yes, ma'am. Maine to California, I've been bus proper. <laughs> we better get back. Uh, wait a second. Um, tell me about it. Uh, about busing. Well, if you pardon me, Miss Kitt, I love life. Huh? Oh. Well, maybe your grandpa wouldn't like it. Oh, he's not here. Yeah, but his friend is. Oh, I can handle him. 
It's kind of difficult to tell. Well, you know what I mean. No. Well, take the Eskimo. The who? The Eskimo. That's sort of a North Pole Arapaho. Well, now, the Eskimo approaches the problem of busing with the nose. You see, when an Eskimo fella gets stuck on an Eskimo girl, well, he busses her like this. Well, that isn't the silliest thing. Well, not to an Eskimo, does it? Well, supposing they had a bad cold. Oh. Well, then there's the French. Now, in France, they're pretty romantic. They do their busing sort of elegantly, like this. Oh, ma chérie, je t'adore, je t'aime. What does all that mean? It's French and it means, my darling, I adore thee, I love thee. Oh, sweet talk. Go on. Well, there's all kinds of buses. There's the mother bus, like this. The Uncle Joe I haven't seen you in seven years kind of bus, like this. And then there's the friend of a friend kind of a bus. Like that. Yes, but what I want to know is, how does a fella in Colorado bus a girl in Colorado when he's sweet on her and she's sweet on him? Oh, that's not easy to do. Do it. But you can't fake a genuine bus, Miss Kit. A real bus only comes from real love. It's very personal. You see, a fella has to be head over heels in love with a girl. And, well, the girl has to think he's the greatest thing since bottled beer. And then he holds her like this, warm and tight. Because she's the one thing he's been looking for all his life. Understand? Nature's law. That's right. And he busses her little nose. Just a teaser. And he busses one of her pretty eyes. Just to show he was only teasing. And then... Yes. And he busses her lips. Oh, yes. Why don't you keep your big mouth shut? Stand still and I'll play a tune on you.
Captain, it's just a war party and it's bad enough. If the main camp ever lights on us, we're finished. Well, hold him off till dark. Then just won't fight in the dark. Get rid of the barbarians! What are you trying to do to Miss Sweeney? What's your... Well, put it on! the wagons, you might hit one of our own men. Yes. Hey! Hey, crooked knife, it's me, Johnny! Hey! No, no, yeah, me, hey! A friend of yours? Fair weather. Pulling out on us. <laughs> we won! We won! What a sack of that curtain! I'm afraid not, man. What do you mean? We chased them, didn't we? It was just a war party. He's right. They'll be back with the sun with plenty more of their breed. We'll make our stand in the canyons ahead. There's one night when it'll be smart to have our backs against the wall. Especially us greenhorns. What did he say? He said he was afraid the fireworks he was carrying would have turned the whole thing into the... Fireworks? What fireworks? Fireworks for a tomahawk. Chinese New Year. Yeah, but that was last February. Oh, me a long time late. <laughs> Yeah, let me fix it. Thanks. Nothing. I'm just sorry you got creased. Oh, could have been worse. Pony got that wounded Indian to talking. Yeah? Well, Pony? Big camp. To the north. Two hundred braves. Yeah, I heard him. Say, Pawnee, ask him if we let him go, will he take me to that camp? You gone loco? Well, I got an idea. You know what those engines will do to you. They'll string you up with rawhide. Then they'll string a rattler six inches from your face. Then they'll start wetting that rawhide. And it'll stretch and stretch. Look, I have never considered myself a brave man. I leave the heroics to somebody else. But this is a matter of self-preservation. If I don't do something tonight, we'll all get it. Nothing doing. Mr. Kitt, we've scared them off for now, but they'll be back with that sun 200 strong. Now, maybe you don't mind sudden death, but there's a lot of places I haven't seen yet. I want to live. We'll give them as good as we get. And then what? The trestle's gone. How are you going to cross Massacre Creek? We'll figure it out when we get there. But if you just let me go, I could take care You'd of You'd like to hit the owl hoot, wouldn't you? I promise you I won't run away. I don't believe you. Well, that's your trouble. You haven't believed me at all, not about anything. But you better stop believing me this time, or you're going to leave your scalp, and everybody else is right here. Dude's got a point, Miss Kit. I'm listening. After all, he's a city man. Maybe he has some slick ideas. Not as slick as yours, Dakota. Now, there he goes again, riling me up. He just ain't a friendly man. I'm still listening. All right. Crooked Knife is a friend of mine. I got an idea. If I can get to see him, I can persuade him. Now, here's the plan. Loud enough for you?
I want to talk to Crooked Knife. Hit me down, sir. Johnny. Johnny behind the deuce. Took you long enough to recognize me, Chief. Menani Pana. Dev pre afa e afa. Hasana bahap. What paint? What are you doing here, Johnny? When I last saw you, you. Marry me, were... wasn't it? <laughs> Let's power, Chief. Custer? How is Wahoo Jim? I haven't seen him in months. He took that Wild West show back east. That was a good show. <laughs> we played the standing room in Laramie. Remember the night you used me as a live target in that knife throwing act? <laughs> <laughs> you had a mustache then. The knife slipped a little and cut it off. <laughs> Never been able to grow one since. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the good days. Chief, you remember what we used to yell when the show was in trouble? We needed help. Hey, Rube! Well, I'm calling Hey, Rube to you right now. Johnny, you were good to me, like a blood brother. We are friends. My people will not attack your iron horse. I don't mean that. I mean, I want your help to get that iron horse through the tomahawk. We are at war with the pale face. You remember this trick? <laughs> deuces. All deuces. It's a loaded deck. You can't lick it. Well, this is a loaded war you're fighting. You can't win. Johnny, I know you're right. But my people will never walk the white man's road. If I can sell them an idea, will you bring them? You will only lose your scalp. Music professor, if you please. There it is. Yeah, listen to him yell. All right, mister. Set that stuff up in Prado. My people, this one is very wise. A man of big medicine. He wishes us to help him carry his iron horse when the sun rises in the east. We spare him because he is your friend. But if he is a man of big medicine, let him show us a sign. My friend, that's exactly why I am here. You say you want to see a sign? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Inside my coat, I have something that will show you a sign, the likes of which that have never been seen west of the Allegheny Mountains. Now, if you'll just step back so these other gentlemen can see, I would like you to examine this little thing. It's nothing but a stick, you notice, and a piece of string. Nothing up either sleeve, no mustache to deceive you. I take this stick, place it in the fire. Will you step back, sir? Thank you. Right here. Hold it, pal! What did he say? Dog eater. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. <laughs> now, you fellas know we're just trying to make it look. How are you? Neata! I beg your pardon? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you standing there. Crowd right on in. Step aside, men. Let that artist through. That's right, you stay right here. I want you to see everything. Seeing is believing, you know. <laughs> is that right, Chief? I hope. There's a signal. Light up the whole shebang. Let's get out of here, fast.
<laughs> There's no business like show business. <laughs> Listen. It's Johnny. He's back. Did it work? It's like a charm. They fell for it, huh? Oh, nice work, Johnny. <laughs> Crooked Knife says he'll have as many Indians here at dawn as we need. Whole tribe, if necessary. <laughs> well, well, you don't say. And what are the little shavers going to do? Swim across Massacre Creek with Miss Sweeney? We're not crossing the creek. We're taking her over Funeral Peak. Do you think that these poor mules and them poor redskins can haul 33 tons of locomotive over that peak? Those mules and those redskins are going to haul that shebang over the mountain if we have to take her apart down to every last nut and bolt with each of us carrying a hunk. What? What did you say? You heard what I said. And what I said goes. Is that so? Well, if you or any other traveling grunt figures to car knock this calliope, there's going to be a cornfield meet. This lung jerker was built to bat the stack on rust. And if any bailing wire artist thinks he's going to graveyard, he's going to hit the ditch. Hmm. What'd he say? He said no. Is that so? Pilgrim, I've slapped another with chuckle ball and short horns before. And if you don't hanker for me to shake the load out of this hog-leg and ventilate your bonnet, you better abide Prado. What'd she say? She said, if you don't let her take the engine apart, she'll blow your brains out. Ha! Huh. She sure knows how to win an argument. Don't she? You take that and I'll take this in. What have they done here? So help me, I had no part in it. It's like seeing a great lady without her corsets on. Don't worry, Emmy, we'll put you together on the other side of the mountain. It's humiliating, ain't it? I couldn't say. Miss Kidd, how much farther is it? Oh, that horse point's just down in the sink. What time is it? 28 degrees. What? 8.30. Oh, well, Tomahawk's only 20 miles beyond. I better scout on ahead, Miss Kidd. Don't want any trouble on the trail now. I think we'd have a lot less trouble if someone else rode point, someone we could trust. Now, there he goes again, always pushing me. A man can only take so much. Button up. I still think you're making a mistake letting that fella go on ahead. You're running this sheep bang, or is that Galoot? I'm running it, Dakota, and you go on ahead and scout. And you simmer down where I can watch you. Yes, ma'am. Colonel! What is it? Trouble! Come here, quick! They're crossing the divide, with the engine and all. That's impossible. The Indians are helping them. Bad medicine. Bad medicine. What happened? Pale Face brought big magic. Him and Crooked Knife, blood brother. You're lying, you half-breed. You sold out, didn't you? No, no. I talk with straight tongue. I'll teach you to double-cross me. All right, Clayton, we've got to come out in the open. You ride on ahead of Tomahawk. Get the boys together. Bring them back with horses and ammunition. I'll meet you on the hill above Phantom Curve. If it's war they want, we'll give it to them. Now, Prano. Right, Colonel. Willie, take these horses. 
Sorry, ma'am. Bushwhackers. Probably working for the stage company. Got them spraying lead into that shebang not more than five minutes ago. Took after them, but they got away. Well, how many? Oh, maybe 20. Get their names. Oh, you would have thought the Cayuses would have left tracks here of us. No sign on this ground but yours, you told us. Uh, they was using Winchesters, ma'am, from off that way. I don't give a yell who's shooting from where. All I know is Miss Sweeney ain't going no place without water in her tender. Well, I don't think you'll take any more, Mr. Sweeney. Any more what? Water. I filled her to the brim before we left Epitaph. What? I told you to make that engine light as possible. What are you taking on for? If Sad Eyes hadn't filled the tender, we'd rust here. The thing that bothers me, we're having any firewood to smoke up with. Firewood? <laughs> what may I ask is that? Pull it away there, man. That's it. Pull hard on it. Come on. That's it. There you are. All right, now. Come on. Load this stuff up here. Get the kettle on there. Sad eyes can't build a fire to get that kettle on there. Come on. Be about through here. How you coming? Be about a minute now. Say, Johnny, go up in the cab and take a look and see how the head of steam is coming, will you? Hey, Tootsie. Put a little elbow grease in that. I'm trying, honey. Well, try harder. That goes for you, too. Never mind the shaking, just shine. Let's see what's up. Well, I still think there's a little too much starch. Oh, very sorry. Hey, Mr. Sweeney! Hey, Mr. Sweeney! Hey, Mr. Sweeney! Glory be, it works. Come on, girls, get down off of here now. All right, boys, that's enough. Slim, you drive those mules out back to Epitaph. We won't be needing them anymore. I cook it nice. You stay with these wagons and give them protection on to the tomahawk. Hire yourself fast. We'll be on the engine moving the same. We got 40 minutes for 20 miles. And 10 of them are gritted up through the gorge. Savvy, let's go. I found these empty cartridge shells under the tank there. What you might want to look at. I sure would. Uh, excuse me, Miss Kit. These didn't come out of the Winchester. These are six-gun shells. That's right, ma'am. A six-gun is a short-range weapon. We'd have sure found some signs on the ground. Well, the only signs on the ground were Dakotas. Yeah. Dakotas. Pony, what'd you say about Dakota the first time we met him? That's too bad. He sure was mighty pretty. Dakota? Uh, where did you say you were peace officer? Deadwood. Deadwood, I was there last month. Cigar store Indians and iron grip fly paper. <laughs> Northern South Dakota. Did you know Wild Bill Hickok? Why, sure, I was one of his deputies. He's a friend of mine. He's a friend of yours? You heard me. When did you see him last? Oh, just two weeks back before I hit the trail for Colorado. Uh -huh. Is he looking well? Why? Because when I saw him one month ago, he didn't look so good. He was laid out in his coffin after a back shooter named Jack McCall killed him dead. You got five seconds to get this engine going. But I can't...
right, Johnny? It's your engine, Mr. Sweeney. Kid, are you all right? No, he hit me. Hey, well, what'd you come aboard like that for? I was worried stiff. I thought he was gonna kill you. Pull alongside. Aim for a passenger. If you can't hit the passenger, put your bullets into her boiler. Hey, we must be close to Tomahawk. Follow after. Come on. They're empty, boys. Let's get them. Colonel, look. Tomahawk. And there's Chuckity in the wagon. Just over a minute. His watch is wrong. Well, we can't do it. We can't reach it in time. There's the town limit. That's shine, but you can't budge it. Are you the mayor of this here metropolis? I am, sir. And these are the town councilmen. Well, listen, Mr. Mayor. You're not going to let a little thing like a quarter of a mile keep this railroad from getting its franchise, are you? There's nothing I can do. What do you mean there's nothing you can do? The charter was issued under the laws of Colorado Territory. And territorial law says the railroad must be in operation six years from the date of that charter. And the T and W six years are up at high noon, which is exactly 45 seconds away. Don't you shake no chatter at me. Well, listen, Mr. Mayor, think of what it'll mean to you. Not only the gold and the silver you can take out of those mountains and the money you can put to work for this country, but think, think of what it'll mean in commerce, schools for your children. Why, you can make civilization out of a frontier. I'm the first passenger on that train, Mr. Mayor. There's my ticket. I'm proud of it. I want to tell my grandchildren about it. The territorial law... Never mind territorial law. Colorado's not a territory anymore. She's a state. For one whole month now, she's been the 38th state in the United States. You want Tomahawk to grow with her? Now, what do you say, Mr. Mayor? The future of the West is in your hands. Young man, go on down and get that sign. Yahoo! Chuckity! Dig me a hole down there, will you? Pete, say, Curry, time's a-wasting. I make a motion that we extend the corporate limits of the town of Tomahawk to the rear end of that engine tender. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Aye. I declare that the T&W has fulfilled its charter as of noon this day, September 5th, 1876. I'm sure glad, Skip. Thanks, Grandpa. Oh, here's your bag. You won the right to wear that permanent. Oh, no, sir, no. You keep it. I'm giving up gunslinging. What? By glory, you'll do no such thing. No Dodge ever give up with Stardley was dead in his tracks. I know, Grandpa. But I'm not a he. I'm a she. There's a difference, you know. How'd you find that out? From the man I'm going to get hitched to. Johnny, I want you to meet my Grandpa. Why, you low-down, creep-crawling snake. No such thing. He's a traveling man. A traveling man? A drummer? Why, you varmint. 
Stand back, kid. Get away from him. Stand back, I say. Get clear of him. I'd hate to put you away, Grandpa. Well, that's the way you feel about it. Give me my star. Take my blessing. No, no, Mr. Dodge. Uh... Johnny! No, kid, your grandfather's right. I'm not the man for you. You said it yourself. I got a loose foot, no roots. But, Johnny, I love you. I love you. I love you, and I wouldn't make you unhappy for the world. But I'd always be on the go. Home to me would just be a one-night whistle stop. Well, maybe you wouldn't have such a loose foot if, if I gave you a permanent limp. Now, kid, honey, there's no use flying in the face of fate. I'm warning you. If you try to leave, I'll, I'll shorten your shoe size. Well, I'm throwing short and kit, because when we get back to Epitaph, I'm heading east. Durango, Alamosa, and points east, the Bloody Basin Cannonball, leaving on track one in 30 seconds. You. Yes, sir. You're looking to say goodbye to Kit. She's over yonder. Thank you. How? Mr. Sweeney, have you seen Johnny? Kit. Well, I guess this is it. But Johnny, I'll miss you. Well, I'll miss you, too. You be good and yeah, take care of yourself and everything. Johnny, aren't you going to bust me? They sure make a nice looking couple, don't they? I well, couldn't say. Watch out for yourself, dear. Don't you worry about me, honey. A man born to travel has a way with the world. <laughs> Johnny, you forgot your hat. Now, so I did. Oh, and don't be late for dinner. Now, the Tomahawk and Western is always on time. All aboard! <laughs> deuces, all deuces. Johnny, you forgot your cake. Oh, thanks. Bye, Kit. Goodbye, darling. Girl, wait to your father. Bye, Papa. Bye, Connie, Barbara, Mary, and Marilyn, and Joyce. <laughs> Soon as I get there, they got 